Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week I'm going to be painting... Not that. What I will be painting, however, is one of my favorite things. And if you are a fan of this channel and you've been watching me for a while, you're probably going to know exactly what that is. But for those of you that don't, I really love vampires. And we've gotten a bunch of recent vampire models, and I picked out one in particular that I'm very excited for, and it is from the Crimson Court Underworld set. Prince Duval himself. He is majestic, he has a lot of like fleshy bits, but he also has a lot of armor, and he has some clothy bits that I want to play with. And I have some very exciting things that I'm going to be trying on this miniature because I've been playing with metallic paints a lot recently, which is not something that I've done in the past. And I'm really, really enjoying it now that I actually understand how they work and how to manipulate them and how to get them to do what I want them to do. And I want to push that even further and actually play with some colored metallic paints. So for this piece, I have some plans to use a really cool red metallic paint on his armor that I'm hoping you guys are going to absolutely love. And I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into painting Prince Duval. To start, I wanted to get my miniature primed up using some Wraithbone. I did this because I knew I was going to be using a lot of reds and warm color palettes, so I thought the Wraithbone would complement that better, hence the undercoat of that particular color. Now that he's ready to go, let's get some paint on him. I mentioned in the intro that I was going to be playing with a lot of metallic paints this time, in particular some colored metallics, which I hadn't really used before, so I wanted to do a little bit of testing before I got going with this project. And what I did is I tested to see what would work best as a base coat for my red metallic paint that I was going to be using on his armor, and ultimately decided that Black Templar was going to work best. I was going for a particularly deep red color tone, and I did try out Flesh Terror's Red to see if maybe that would work, because it is already a dark, dark red, but the Black Templar ended up working best, so that's what I went with. It also worked out beneficially because this color can work underneath the golds and silvers that I'm going to be applying to him as well, so I can just get all of the parts that I need to be metallic hit up in this color. I also want his hair to be black, so I'm going to make sure to hit that at this time while I've got this color out. Gemstone is the color that we're going to be painting his armor in, and I absolutely adore this color. I've only used it this one time and the little bit of testing that I did prior to this video, and I immediately fell in love with this color. It is a glorious sort of cherry red, like candy colored look, and I just love it. It's exactly what I want for his armor, because I was wanting to go with this sort of classic blood red armor appearance, but I wanted it to actually be shiny. And I didn't want to have to do that with a wash or anything. So I'm really glad that I had this paint. It's an army painter paint, which I've not actually used a huge amount, but I'm really enjoying branching out my paint varieties and going and trying these other colors in combination with all of my Citadel colors, which I still love a lot. Before we fully finish up his armor, I want to take a brief pause and go ahead and actually use some natural steel on his sword because there's some pieces on his sword that I want to be gold and I figured getting the steel down first would just be easier and save me some cleanup and hassle, so I did it first. Plus there are a couple of pieces on the armor, in particular some of the like blood drops and other embellishments on his belt that I also want to use the steel color on just to help break up some of the colors and add a little bit more variety to the overall look of my mini. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. Now it's time to work on all of that trim. And for that, I'm going to be pulling out Liberator Gold, which is Probably my favorite gold color tone that Citadel makes. I use it all of the time, but it just works really well and I can manipulate it really easily because of how pale it is. So we're gonna apply this to a number of key locations. In particular, I want to make sure to hit those angry little bat faces on both his belt buckle 
as well as his shoulder piece. And basically that whole shoulder section is going to end up being mostly gold. I think it's going to stand out really cool and have a really nice, like, just dramatic emphasis and everything. Plus there's a couple of other key locations on his armor that I left for some gold paint just to again, help break up some of that overarching color palette and basically add a little bit more variety and depth back into the model. So we have some great visual interests happening. It's coming together really nicely, but before we move too much further, I wanna wrap up the metallics and get some shades on them because my gosh, I'm really pleased with how this is going. And the first wash that I'm going to be using is Karoberg Crimson. This is a beautiful sort of deep red violet um, shade that I really, really like and does gorgeous things with this gemstone red paint that I used on his armor. It deepens it perfectly, exactly how I wanted it to. It added a little bit of an aged look. It knocks back the shine, which is exactly what I want because metallic paints can be very, very shiny sometimes. So this subdues that and really just lets the coloring stand out with a little hint of that shimmer. And it's just looking really, really good. I wanna make sure to especially emphasize this in some of the deeper recess areas, especially on his chest piece with that bigger bat face on the actual chest. Those eye sockets, I wanted to make sure to get a little bit of extra paint into with this Caribou Crimson, because I wanted them to really stand out without actually being a separate color. I still wanted it to just look like the molded metal um, or the, the, the sculpted metal, I guess. Um, but I wanted it to still have those deep recess like they were sh shadowed and it works really well. I'm just very happy with this entire process. For the rest of the metallics, I'm going to keep it actually relatively simple. I'm simply going to water down some Bacillo Canum Gray. Not as much as I did previously. I really watered it down in my last video. This time I'm only doing basically a half and half mix. And what this will do is it'll patina all of my gold and my silvers just a little bit to again, knock back that shine and also especially on the gold, what the Bacillo Canum ends up doing to the bat faces, I love. It's exactly what I was wanting because I wanted this look of it almost being somewhat organic, like it was an actual bat face that had been like maybe stuck on. I almost even considered doing it in like a bone or actually doing it as if it was furred or something like that. Decided against it and I'm very glad that I did because I love the look that this is getting me. But this just, works so well, I'm very happy with the result and it does exactly what I want it to, which is mostly make the metal look aged and a little bit muted and a little bit alive, which for a, you know, fantasy undead vampire who probably casts magic or something, works really well for me. So it's a good look. All right, the metallics are done and looking fantastic, but there's a lot of paint in a lot of places that I don't want it and I need to clean that up first. So I'm gonna grab a pot of Wraithbone and go ahead and just tidy up all of the areas that I got paint I didn't need it to be. Especially focusing on any areas that I know is going to be only getting contrast paint. The skin, for example, I'm not as worried about because the color that I'm gonna be putting on it first is another opaque. So it'll end up be getting covered anyways, any mistakes that I had done. Whereas like on the cloth and leathers, I wanna make sure those are especially clean because they're gonna be getting contrast paint and some of these darker metallics will definitely shine through some of the colors I'm gonna be using. Now that my cleanup phase is done and he is looking spectacular, I'm ready to move on to painting the butt cape that he has. And for that, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally, I just paint the capes all one color. I didn't want to do that here because the front side of the cape, I guess technically the side that's on his back, um, is going to be red. And I thought that that was going to be too much red and it would end up getting washed out and lost. So to help differentiate it, I decided to make the underside, like the inner lining of the cape, a nice dark basilicanum gray. This still sticks with the dark color scheme that I'm going for. It'll help tie in the patina that I did on the metallics, but it's not so dark that it's going to get just sort of lost or washed out like Black Templar sometimes can when it's on just a basic flat surface when there's no ridges or anything. So I thought the basilicanum was a great choice. Now let's move on to the front side of the cape. where I will be using Flesh Terrors Red, probably my favorite contrast paint ever. I just adore this color. You can put it on in a single coat, which is exactly what I did here. Now, 
I had a almost disaster happen while I was painting this because my hand just decided to wildly slip and I got some red paint on the basilicanum gray that I had just painted and I panicked briefly but continued with what I was doing because one of the benefits that contrast paint has is it stays wet relatively longer than some other paints. Now it still dries very, very quickly, but if you've globbed it on kind of like how I did when I was painting this fabric, because I knew I wanted to move that paint around, it was still very, very wet. So I was able to finish what I was doing so that I would avoid streaking or weird blotchiness happening with my reds. And then off camera, I went ahead and cleaned up what I'd spilled onto the gray. It actually was able to blot up really easily with just a clean brush with a little bit of water. The gray paint stuck fine, the red lifted right off, and I only needed to do a very minor amount of gray touch-up on basically just like the very, very edges to kind of darken them back down and hide a little bit of staining. But overall, it worked really well. So if you ever have this happen to you where you maybe have some contrast paint spill, and if it's still very wet, don't panic finish what you're doing and then go clean it up if you have the time because you can probably then save yourself some extra effort later of having to fix what you had to stop in the middle of to you know clean up your mistake just my little bit of advice because he is an undead vampire boy i of course wanted to give him as pale as a flesh as possible so what i chose was to first layer down some pallid witch flesh now, this was a little bit of a challenge, not because there was anything difficult about painting his face or hands or anything like that. Nothing was super obscured. It was simply that the pallid witch flesh sort of blended into my wraithbone undercoat really well. And I had a little bit of a hard time telling the hue difference and making sure that I got everything painted. I had to just spend a little bit of extra time making sure that I got everything simply because my eyes did not want to read the differences between the two paints very well. Once I did have all of that pallid witch flesh down on all of his fleshy bits, it was time for some skeleton hoard. Now I'm going to start by using the straight out of the pot on that one random skull that is on his base. But when we get to his flesh, I'm actually going to thin the skeleton hoard immensely. I want it to be really watery and just leave a very, very light glaze of this color over top. The reason I went with skeleton hoard over some of the other flesh tones that contrast paint has is because I didn't necessarily want too much more red on his flesh. I actually wanted it to be a little bit bony, which is why I went with Skeleton Horde. And I figured his translucent, almost pale white skin could maybe be you know, stretched so taut onto his face that you were seeing a little bit of a skull through him. That was at least the, the idea with it. And I actually think it worked pretty well. He has a little bit more of a life look to him than I want, but I have an easy way to knock that back and actually make him a bit paler. So let's go ahead and move on to that step. So in order to help maintain that ghostly pale look that a vampire is supposed to have, I'm gonna pull back out Pallid Witch Flesh and do some light edge highlighting, specifically focusing on his face, his hands, and a couple of areas on his arms where he's got some very prominent muscles that are going to just be very easy for me to glide my brush gently across. across and leave a little bit of paint down so that I can create a nice highlight. This works really well. I'm actually very much enjoying edge highlighting faces at least. I've gotten a little bit more control. I'm a little bit more confident. And so my hand is a bit more steady and I'm really enjoying the effects that I'm getting with it and the results that I'm getting out of it because his face ended up looking a little darker than I wanted. But with these highlights, I've reduced that back. He's very pale again and he looks more vampiric, which is exactly what I wanted. There are only a few more things that I need to actually paint on this miniature before I can call him done. And one of those is all of the leather pouches on his back, as well as the leather straps on his arm that's holding one of his armor pieces together. So for that, I'm actually going to go back to a color I've not used in a very long time, Snake Bite Leather. It works beautifully as a leather color tone. I wanted to avoid anything having any sort of red hue to it, and Snake Bite definitely doesn't, so I figured why not go back to a classic and just keep it simple? And it works really well. I was saying that I was really pleased with his face, but there is one final detail that needs to be done on it before I'm truly happy with it. And for that, I'm going to pull out some Blood Angels Red 
and delicately dot his eyes using this color. I'm also going to be putting Blood Angels Red on the little, um, he's got this like vial thing that's attached to his belt near his pouches that I'm assuming is like an orb of blood or something, either for casting or maybe he needs a snack while he's on the road and that's his, you know, how he gets that in case there isn't like humans around for him to eat. So I just wanted to make sure that that was emphasized and differentiated from the rest of the colors that I've been using, but still, you know, red because that's the color scheme of this guy. <laughs> All right, my vampire is basically done except for his base. And there's actually not that much that we need to do to it. The first thing that we're going to do is tackle that beautiful bust using some Apothecary White. And we're just gonna put this directly over top. I have used Apothecary White a number of times, um, either on camera or off camera, I can't remember now, on marble and other stones, and I love it. I absolutely love it. The slight blue tint that that color has when it dries and that how it settles into the recesses just always works for me. And in particular, it just almost always seems to look just really good on these really detailed, cracked, broken busts that GW likes to put on a lot of their sculpted bases. So we apply that evenly and let it dry. Next, I'm gonna grab some Space Wolf Gray to complement that really pretty blue shadow color that I got on my marble, um, because I just really wanna emphasize that and sort of tie them together. So Space Wolf Gray has this nice, cool undertone, a little bit of a blue hue, and it works really well, but it's not quite doing what I want it to. So I'm gonna do a quick dry brush to see if that helps add a little bit more detail back in. And that next color is going to be Fenrisian Gray. I'm doing this because I wanted to see about getting some interesting effects on the stone to give it a little bit more of an actual textured look, um, as well as I wanted to brighten up and re-highlight some of the stones because I thought they had gotten a little bit dark and a little bit splotchy. So I figured this would help blend my color a little bit and it does, but not quite to the level that I wanted it to. So we have one more thing that I'm gonna do to the base before I'm gonna call it done. And that final thing is simply to basically wash it with some Space Wolf Gray one more time to reduce the textured effect that I got with my Fenrisian Gray because I ended up going a little heavier than I intended. But the texture actually ended up being pretty cool. And this wash that I've put back over top really reduces it down and blends it all together. And now he is done. So let's take a look at the final product. And here he is, my majestic regal vampire lord. And I absolutely love the way that he turned out. I had a lot of challenges going into him that made me a little bit nervous for my vampire guy because I wasn't 100% sure how the armor was going to turn out with using the metallic paints. It ended up working really, really well. And I like the combination of the Caraberg Crimson shade with that metallic because it deepened the color just enough to exactly how I was wanting to, it to look. And I am just so, so pleased with how it turned out. And the gold complement worked beautifully, especially with my Basilicanum wash on it because I really wanted to sort of emphasize the organic nature of the pieces on, especially that shoulder piece and his belt buckle because it's got the bat face on it, right? And the Basilicanum patina the gold just enough to really make it look almost organic, which Liberator Gold is really good at that. And I really enjoy working with it because of it. And the Basilicanum coloring, because it's a bat, really just worked with like their traditional fur color. So overall, it just went with the sort of like goth aesthetic I was wanting with all of these red tones to complement it. And I really, really enjoyed how the base turned out. It's very simple. Like I actually didn't have to do that much for it. I simply put Apothecary White over that really cool marble sculpt that they had on it, but it worked brilliantly because that slight blue hint to that Apothecary White tends to leave just works as a really nice natural organic stone coloring just perfectly. So I'm really pleased with how overall he just came together, ended up looking really cool. And it's really exciting for me because he's actually the very first vampire miniature 
that I've painted. Um, it's really weird to me actually now that I think about it when I finished him, I was like, is this legit the first vampire that I've painted considering the fact that I love vampires. I have played in multiple Curse of Strahd campaigns for D&D. I collect a lot of vampire miniatures just because I think they look cool. And yet I have actually never painted one. And my first one turned out super, super good. I'm very encouraged to paint more of them. I'm definitely going to be working on the rest of the Underworlds kit for the Crimson Court because I've been really on a kick of painting up all of those kits and I have this little display case for them specifically now. And they look really cool because they're all starting to get painted. So I want to continue that trend. And of course, these are vampires, so I'm definitely not going to be waiting on them. So expect to see photos of that either on the community tab or my Instagram later on this month as I complete them. But in the meantime, I would love to know what you thought of my glorious prince of vampires and tell me about them in the comments, of course. Make sure to like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I have been Angela, you have been watching Hobby Night, and I will see you guys next week for a brand new video, both a news video and a painting video. Anyways, I've been Angela. See ya.